Hello to our newly registered students. We are absolutely excited to add you to the Faulkner family today and we congratulate you on completing this huge step. Now that you are registered, we want to take a moment to show you how to set up some important accounts. The links that we're going to mention should be included in the same email you found this video, but if you're having some trouble locating it, feel free to reach out to your admissions counselor. We'll be happy to get that to you. Now there are three primary accounts that you will be keeping track of as a student. Luckily, most of them have the same information to log in, just in various combinations. The primary login info you want to keep track of includes your social security number, your student ID, and your personally created password. Now your student ID should have been included in a recently mailed document titled Incomplete Form. If you haven't received that just yet, no worries, it's probably still en route. In the meantime, feel free to email your admissions counselor and request your ID number. As we begin our tutorial, I want to go ahead and make sure we give a special thank you to Alvin Dean for letting us use your account as an example. Alvin, we could not have done this without you. Appreciate you so much. Now we're going to jump into the first step and that is setting up your personal password. Let's go ahead and get started. The first username we're coming across is going to be using your student ID number. So let's go ahead and input that in. But make sure to add at faulkner.edu to the end of your username. For the password, this is an automatic default one that is going to use a combination of two digit birth month, two digit birth date, and the last four digits of your social security number. So let's put that in now and log in. Once you're logged in, you're going to have the opportunity to do a few different things here, including changing your security questions. If you ever get locked out, this is going to be the best way to get back in. And of course, change your password itself. You definitely want to make it something you could remember, but let's not make it so easy that somebody else could get into it as well. Definitely not the time for one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that we've created a password, we're going to be able to log in to your new Faulkner student email account. What we're going to do is go to the classic Gmail webpage, gmail.com, and your username is actually going to go ahead and be pretty simple. It is basically just your first name, dot last name, at faulkner.edu. This particular case, we're going alvin.dean at faulkner.edu. Now, you could also use your student ID at faulkner.edu as a username here as well. That would work. But just for the sake of keeping things simple, until you learn your student ID number a little bit more naturally, it's going to be a lot easier just to use your name. Click Next, put in the password you just created, and if it was done correctly, you should be agreeing to some terms, and you have a full-fledged Google Suite available to you now, which means unlimited storage, access to Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Google Presentation. Uh, these are going to make things a lot easier to take care of and uh, really going to be useful during your time as a student. I do want to take a moment to emphasize the importance of checking your email and doing that often. During the summer, you will be fine maybe checking it three times a week, but right before classes begin and certainly in the middle of the fall semester, you want to be in the habit of checking it about three times a day. This will be the primary way that the university contacts you as well as many of your professors. So if you don't want to miss out on important information, make sure to check your email. Now that your email has been set up, we get to perhaps one of the most important stages of today's tutorial, and that is signing your payment agreement. Unless this thing is signed, you're not going to be able to use your ID card to use your meal plan, get inside the dorms, and a variety of other things. So this is very important to do today. We're going to go ahead and go to my.faulkner.com. Edu. And once it loads, we're going to use our same student ID number. No need for the at faulkner.edu this time, just the digits. Your password is going to be the same password you created recently. And as it loads, you're going to be able to go ahead and change the terms of which we're dealing with. You're going to go ahead and go to 2020 fall, and it's going to change up the screen a little bit to have some different things uh, visible. You're going to notice your courses have been set. You're going to notice that housing's been set. And you're, we're going to go ahead and review this over right quick, make sure everything looks right. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the payment agreement itself. Now, what this is, is your opportunity to review the charges to your particular semester. You're looking at courses. You're looking at housing. Perhaps you're looking at a lab fee or any other additional fees that may have come up with being part of a sport. This is your chance to go ahead and review that. And please remember that your charges is not the same thing as your balance. 
your financial aid is going to be implemented throughout the fall semester, subtracting away from these charges. But we want to go ahead and make sure that the charges themselves look correct. Go ahead and read through, check out the terms, and sign if everything looks correct. Obviously, if something does look a little off, please notify your admissions counselor as quickly as possible. We want to go ahead and take care of that right away and address any issues there might be. Now you may notice that Alvin's page looks a little bit blank here along with an error code at the top. The reason is that this is a simple Praxis account. We did not request Student Life to give us any type of particular approval in our signing up here. That approval, however, was given to you during your registration process a couple of days ago. So this is about the point where our pages are going to look just a little bit different. Now you may have also noticed though a second notification regarding health forms. While these forms are certainly necessary for housing, it is something that is going to be turned in throughout the summer. In fact, you may have already turned those forms in. We are going to go ahead and mark them as received later on in the summer when it's that part of the process to review. However, it is not going to hold you up for this payment agreement. It's not going to keep you from finishing this part of the process. So feel free to disregard it in a sense. Please, if you haven't done it, don't forget about it. However, it is not something that needs to be taken care of just right here or right now. Again, the main takeaway for this point is to review the charges, look at the terms, and put in your signature so you are now officially registered for 2020 fall. And with that, our short tutorial slash keyboard ASMR video has come to an end. We do hope it was helpful in some manner, even if it's just to give you some reassurance you're setting up your student account in the proper way. We look forward to having you in the fall, and again, we are just so glad to be part of your family, and in turn, we are happy to have you part of ours. Stay healthy this summer, God bless, and soar eagles.